The following is an original audio series from Sierra International Machinery, Pile of Scrap, with your host, John Sacco. This is another episode of Pile of Scrap. It might be my emergency Pile of Scrap Part 2 since the world is getting more and more, you know, coronavirus. Look, it's real. I understand that. But I witness some things that are not real smart, if you will. First of all, everybody, I want you to know my daughter, Giovanna, made it home safely Friday from Europe. And she feels great. And she's doing her part, self-quarantine. She's over uh, at a place over at the coast. And uh, she feels great. Uh, She's doing good. But, you know, she's a little unnerved by it because she says, she sends me a text. This thing is getting crazy. Uh, should I go get more food? Should I get some food at the store? I said, yeah, go get some food. And so today, is I, I posted on my LinkedIn and on my Instagram a, a store visit. I wanted to see for myself how real was the shelves being empty. <laughs> it's real. But what was it empty of? Empty of water, bottled water. Empty of toilet paper and paper towels. So I have a lot of thoughts about this. When I was a kid, I was in cloth diapers. I survived without diapers, paper towels, toilet paper by that, for that much. So my parents would obviously dutifully clean the dirty diaper, wash it off, and then put it in the washer machine. So I said to myself today, as I looked at that, I said, okay, people are really worried about this, but the detergent sector in the store was full of detergent. I said, well, people aren't thinking. You can buy detergent, you can, you can wash dirty clothes, anything. You don't need paper products. Um, and that goes to paper products. Where are the paper mills? Now I'm in the recycling industry, as you know, and the paper mills that produce a lot of this tissue and paper, it'd be nice to hear from them. Has anybody heard from them? And how about the water, you know, the bottled water, the Coca-Colas of the world? These big companies that produce mass amounts of water. How about them telling the public in America, hey, everybody, we have plenty of supply. It's on its way. Relax. Put a, put a commercial out instead of drink Coke and be feeling great and, you know, world peace. That's fine. How about make the world a more peaceful place by telling the world we have plenty of water and we're producing water and the paper people, paper mills, we're producing plenty of tissue paper, plenty of paper towels. Everybody calm down. We're going to help you through this because that's the kind of information we're getting. You know, everybody's trying to blame somebody for all of this. All I would say is communication always keeps people from being on edge. So today as I was going through the the market and I've seen a lot of things uh, missing, you know, there was no chicken, but there was plenty of peanut butter. Plenty, peanut butter has plenty of protein. It's a good substitute. Um, there was rice. Rice is good food. Uh, canned tomatoes. Look, I'm Italian. Hey, a little olive oil, garlic, canned tomatoes. You make the best pasta you can. There are a lot of products in the store that I think people should be buying if they're worried about not being able to take care of themselves other than toilet paper. And I'm not putting them down because they have fear. And, you know, look, there, this is times where there's a lot of fear, but calm down, people. Open your minds up. What do you really need for food products? What, you know, sustainability is the key to surviving this. Okay, a little Lysol spray and wipes. You know, I'm good with that because you know what? You spray down the door handles and all that. I think that's that's smart. That's good business. Keep your hands washed. That's good personal hygiene. This is a very important part of what we do to stay healthy, to stay ahead of this. And, and you know, I have an elderly mom. She's uh, uh, going to be 89 years old in April. Uh, she's staying in. She's smart. She gets it. You know, she's... Um, I don't want to say bad health, but, you know, I think 
this would be very, very, very grave if she she got it. So she's doing her part. So I think you see some of this mass hysteria at Costco on Friday. My wife drove by and said there's a line all the way around. People fighting. That's not American. That's not worldly. Fighting over these products. If everybody would love thy neighbor and work with their neighbors and not hoard gobs and gobs and gobs of things, we'll get through this together. This will pass. And part of this, for me, you know, look, there's a lot, a lot of uncertainty. I have it as a business owner. Uh, how much is the world going to slow down? You know, stock markets, here it is Sunday. Stock market futures already down a thousand points. But the world really has to stop. We're not going to stop. Eventually, we're going to get through this. H1N1 virus um, killed by 576,000 people worldwide. Um, will this get to that level? Maybe, maybe not. Where was There was no mass hysteria then. And I think that's important. Calm down. I'm going to say it a hundred times. Use your head. Calm down. What does your family really need? Your family needs the parents to be calm so their kids can be calm. Educate them. Talk to them. Have an open discussion of what is going on. Why is this this flu bug so bad from a respiratory standpoint? You know, educate them as well. So I think everybody gets it. But again, I, I want I want to put it out there to the Coca Colas, to the bottling people. You know, you use plastic bottles. That's great for the recycling industry. Great. Put the message out that you have plenty of water. All the water people, all the paper makers, put it out. There's plenty of product on their way. I know there's plenty of chicken farms. We're not going to run low on chicken. We're not going to run low on beef. We're not going to run low on food. But if things were to shut down, make sure you have a little something in your cupboards if you can afford it. My, my son's school uh, shut down two weeks ago on online high school. This ought to be an interesting experience for my kid. So, you know, he plays golf. Uh, he's a high school golfer. He's a pretty good golfer. And he's wondering, well, they canceled the golf tournaments. He's outdoors. There's no crowds. And I guess you have to do it because everything else is canceled. So here the kids are out of school for two weeks. Universities across America. It's not like everybody's not getting together still. So maybe it's not a big classroom, but there are gatherings all over the place. So I think eventually common sense will prevail as we see as we work our way through it. Again, I'm not playing this down. I understand it's very serious. But if you're outside, isn't that the best place to be in the fresh air? You're not indoors where the, the virus can spread. Are you, why not go outside and exercise a little bit? You know, you're staying healthy. So that's, that's kind of the thing why my son is really bothered by the, uh, the l lack of high school golf. Because he, he's like, Dad, there's no crowds. We're out there playing. And he's still playing. So, but I guess old schools have to be fair to everybody. If, if, if you can't play baseball, you got to shut it down for golf as well and for every other spring sport. So it's, it's kind of sad. And there's, how about all these college kids who won't be able to play in the NC2A tournament? I mean, how do you feel for those seniors who, who've been around and want to, uh, you know, play basketball? So there's just a lot going on. And i just going to leave you with this message tonight. I've seen the shelves in the stores. I'd like to hear from just not just government officials. How about big corporations? Let us know that paper products are on the way. Bottling companies, the Coca-Colas, the Pepsis. Tell us your water is on the way. And then maybe we won't have this run on the stores. So let's everybody communicate. It's my job as an owner to communicate with my employees about the risk of COVID-19, things, steps were taken in our company. And a lot of owners, a lot of companies, all my friends are doing that too. So it's up to us to communicate. So let's keep the lines of communications open. And 
like to hear from you. We'll get your feedback shortly from this. We'll get this posted hopefully on Monday, tomorrow, or Tuesday. So everybody have a great rest of your Sunday night and uh, have a great week. Stay smart. Do what you're supposed to do. And that's it. And this is another episode of Pile of Scrap, the emergency version. Thank you. This has been a Sierra International Machinery original audio series. Thanks for listening. Please share this podcast and make sure to subscribe.